The friends spent a night at the Sorrowful Shield Inn after their trip from Bunaber to Staskar, from which they'd continue their journey to Mekardika. Only a few hours outside the city, the party encountered an injured Durgar escaping a tiny, brain-like creature. The creature was easily dispatched, and Tess learned from the Durgar that they had narrowly escaped from a nearby cave where their friends were slaughtered by some terrifying force. The Durgar swore away from their service to the notorious character simply named D, and made their way towards Staskar to hide away. The friends were wary to investigate such dangerous fauna as the tiny brain-like creature, but Antarius insisted that if there is a portal from which these creatures came, then those creatures must be driven back, and the portal closed to ensure the safety of nearby Staskar. Welcome to New Delancia, our Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition campaign. <laughs> when we left off, uh, you guys had obviously just um, interrogated this, well, Tess had just uh, um, interrogated this Durgar who passed by. Uh, the Durgar slew the, um, the tiny brain-like creature uh, before it was uh, able to do any damage or anything like that. But the uh, Durgar himself looked injured and was allowed to pass on to Staskar. Uh, Tess took, I believe, the staff and the pendant from around the, uh, the Durgar's neck. And um, yeah, at this point, I think you guys are just talking about the, uh, or you guys are just planning how you're going to find this cave and, uh, and what you're going to do moving forward. And Daria seems pretty determined to get in there and solve whatever problem is there. So timing-wise, it's about midday. Um, yeah, because you guys left Staskar in the morning. You've probably traveled <laughs> around, I'd say about, what, four hours? Five hours, maybe. <clears throat> so it's about midday, say early afternoon. So I guess the question, um, the question is, how are you guys going to locate this uh this cave don't everybody chime in at once well i can <laughs> uh i can try sniffing it down myself but uh maybe want to use better at tracking hmm perhaps we should divide into teams one staying with the wagons until the other locates the cave. That seems reasonable. Hmm. What say you, Tess? Tess volunteers to stay with the wagon. Then who will go to search for the cave? Oh, I'll go. I can track pretty well. Uh, if you guys recall, before Tess had um, had the Duragar sort of point out on the map where the um, about where the cave would be. Uh, of course, this isn't gonna, this isn't going to give you specific information, so you're still going to have to do some searching. Sarin will stay behind as well at the cart. Okay. Misk is gonna Misk is gonna stay behind and protect the small ones. Okay. Uh so who do we have going? Is it just um is it Ahara and, and Rec? We got Ian Fear typing in chat. <laughs> <laughs> says that thing looks disturbing but you'll need some magic to help with sealing the cave yes uh, Eden Fear we're simply planning to uh, locate the cave 
Ahara, Wreck, once you find the entrance, please return. Let us know its location and we can all make our way there. Oh, here. Our... Here, real quick. And Tess, uh, Tess is going to hand over the pendant, the Balfour pendant, and say, just keep this with you in case Tess doesn't know, in case someone sees you. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's a good idea. Indeed. Okay. Um, so let me think. Oh, man. Let's, uh, so let's get some dice rolling here. Um, so uh, we're, we're going to imagine for starters, this is probably going to take a number of hours um, in order to, find, to actually find the entrance to the cave. Um, so for those of you who are staying back at the cart, what are you doing with the time? Maybe trying uh, to find some high ground or something in a tree to uh, keep an eye on the exploration party. Miss who would definitely be down hanging out in the trees, getting up high. Yeah, I bet she would be good at that. Yeah. Ah. Yolanthi, uh, we're... Um, so we have two teams that have formed. Ahara <laughs> and Rex so far are going to be uh, going out into the forest to search for the cave entrance and uh the rest of the party at the um the rest of the party right now unless you'd like to join well you have your choice of which team you want to join the rest of the party will be sticking behind with the wagons uh keeping watch and um waiting for the first team to report the location of the cave um and then also doing various uh other tasks like uh yeah Val Phelan is going to spend the time um sharpening his weapon um just kind of making ready um making sure he's like kind of going over his supplies and <laughs> uh tess also studies medicine so she's probably going to check out um the vial of goop that she picked off of those were they trolls yes that we fought and just yes, kind of so take that... a look at them and study them okay so they were they were like some rotting um they were like trolls that were kind of like constantly rotting their their own flesh off. Um, so, Yolanthi, do you want to um, do you want to stay back with the wagons, uh, or do you want to venture into the forest and help search for the cave? Um, Yo Yolanthi feels most comfortable staying with Val and Antarius, but there's a lot of people staying with the wagons already, and only two going for the cave, so. I think she's going to kind of reluctantly agree to, to go hunt for the cave. Okay. Uh, understood. Um, cool. Uh, while you guys are out um, searching for the cave, uh, is there anything that you guys want to be kind of on the lookout for? Um, you know, anything else that you're doing, hunting, anything like that? I'm going to cast um, Pass Without a Trace as we leave the wagons. Okay. Can you link that, please? Uh, whether it be in the uh, if you can't do it in D and D Beyond, then you should be able to do it in uh, Foundry itself on your character sheet. Uh, wreck in in a way to increase the stealth mode on this one. Uh, he's going to go ahead and remove his half plate and leave it with the wagons. That way, he doesn't have disadvantage on stealth. Okay. Awesome. So. Pass without a trace, a veil of shadows and silence radiates from you, masking you and your companions from detection. For the duration, each creature you choose within 30 feet of you, including you, as 10 plus 10 bonus to dexterity checks and can't be tracked except by magical means. The character that receives this bonus leaves behind no tracks or other traces of its passage. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> Ashes of a burned leaf of mistletoe and a sprig of spruce. I'd say that's pretty easy for, to, for you to come by. You probably have those components as well. I've got a component pouch. I haven't been tracking what's in it. That's okay. Yeah, the component pouch. Um, the component pouch will have everything necessary to cast your spells. Uh, pretty easy. Um, and I, and I like to think that when you do go into town, you probably find a way to uh, kind of re-up that pouch each time. So considering we we're just in two different towns, you probably have stocked that up. Sounds reasonable. Cool. Um, 
Yeah, excellent. Uh, and it doesn't say anything about the characters having to stay within 30 feet of you that I can tell. So, uh, yeah, you, you guys are also free to split up into the forest if you need to. It's concentration. Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, I guess. Yeah. There's, there's oh, yeah, it is, it is concentration. Yes, I don't know. It, yeah, they probably have to be within 30 feet of you at all times. So it's like a radiation thing of 30, like a 30 foot effect from me. Okay. Okay. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that, that does. Yeah, that does make a lot more sense. Because, yeah, they, it, it's on self. It's not on, every, it's not on individual creatures. Okay. So, yeah, as long as you guys stick together uh, within 30 feet of each other, you, you have the shroud of stealth. Um, if you guys would like to stealth through the forest, go ahead and roll those now. But remember, this will be with a plus 10 bonus. Okay. With the plus 10, it's going to be a 27. 27. 30. 40 from Ahara. <laughs> oh, 30. I'm sorry. 30. And a 26 from Elanthe. Awesome. Man, that super is... Super stealth. Yeah, that is super stealthy. All right. Um, so, as for, uh, as for the rest of the party at the, at the wagon, we have... Um, so, we have Misku, who's keeping watch. Uh, Val's going to prepare his equipment. Um, anybody else? Any uh, any actions to pass the time here? Tess is just working on her medicine and trying to study both the pandemic that's been hitting the greater area and um, the ooze and other various materials that she's kind of picked up throughout our adventures. Okay. Um, in so in in researching this this sort of oozing uh, material, you're able to you're able to to derive that um, that whatever this material is, it's been infused somehow with uh, with magic. That's the dripping ooze stuff. Yeah. Okay, yes, so. the stuff that you collected from the uh, from the the. Uh, trolls and it was caused by magic yeah it was it this is definitely like something that's magical in nature okay. although you can't really can't really tell what school um of magic this this is from um but it it does seem very uh you know what what's your intelligence score actually That up at the top. That would be thirteen. Yeah. Um, there's something about this um, this style of magic that strikes you as as very familiar. Um, you, you you specifically you're told a dead spell um, sort of has this uh, has the same sort of nature about its damage, like where there's. It, it, like within the goop are, are sort of these uh, these pieces of of dead flesh um, that sort of remind you of the the type of um, well the type of damage that spell is capable of putting out. Okay. Serene um, will like offer her assistance to Tess, just in case she has detect magic, she has, um, you know, a couple of other things that might help. So uh, aside from keeping a lookout and uh, making sure that she doesn't hear anything with her fairy ears, um, she might offer her assistance to Tess if Tess would like that. Cool. Yeah. Um, can you go ahead and link your detect magic spell into the chat, please? Sure. I'm going to try to do that. Uh, if you go to your character sheet in, oh, who'd we lose? Ah, Psycon. Um, if you go to your character sheet in uh, Foundry, and Foundry, uh, so open okay. up your character sheet. Yeah. Uh, go to, I think it's going to be under Spellbook. 
Is it in there? Let me see. Oh, you know what? Actually, since it's a first level spell, um, go ahead and go ahead and go to your character sheet in D and D Beyond, and actually just cast the spell from there, because that'll also okay. that'll also pull the uh, appropriate uh, spell slot. Um, I'm trying to do it from there. I'm not sure how to. Let me take. A look. It's not working. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me. So if you go to your character sheet, click on spells, and then scroll down to detect magic. Oh, I mm -hmm. guess there isn't a cast button. Yeah, that's the issue I was having last time. Oh, oh it's yeah, because a... it's not like a thing that's going to roll or anything. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's a ritual. Uh, so technically, you don't. I I don't think you expend a slot from this, um, because you cast it as a ritual. Um. Okay, so for the duration, you sense the presence of magic within 30 feet of you. Uh, if you sense magic in this way, you can use your action to faint aura of any of the creatures. There's magic, and you learn at school of magic, if any. Uh, okay, so uh, you begin to detect magic on the, um, uh, well, specifically, uh, more specifically around you. And there are two sources of magic. Um, there are two sources of magic that you can detect um one is the uh one is the vial uh mm -hmm. actually i'm not sure if the dead creature would give off any kind of magical aura now that i think about that uh, but if it does it's very faint and you definitely can't tell the school um so uh you you definitely detect magic coming from the um, from the vial, and that school of magic. Let's see. Moment, if you please. I believe that's going to be evocation. Okay. So Serene will. Oh yeah. One moment. Just double checking that. Nope. Take that back. It is definitely necromancy. <laughs> uh oh. So Serene is gonna look at Tess, and it's gonna, and she's gonna say, "That's the magic we don't do. That's the magic that brings people back from the dead or deals with death. We just let things die." So what kind of magic exactly? Necromancy magic. Oh, Tess We understands. don't touch that magic. Why not? <laughs> because it's dark. It's very dark. Well, Tess sees it as more of a... Uh, Tess sees it as more of um, a chance of righting your wrongs. Hmm. Maybe dark fairies would agree. Ooh, yeah, dark even, fairies. Even with even with my own people, it's it's less about righting the wrongs and more seem trying to take back things, and we prefer to try to move on and look forward. It's it's considered a bit of a dark magic. That reminds Tess of Tess's village that she lived in. It was uh, very much the same uh, idealism. They definitely did not like seeing their pets again. That's for sure. Antarius <laughs> chimes in at this point. I, uh, I disagree, actually. He's uh, been sitting here sort of polishing his shield um, with a cloth. Um to a, to a radiant shine. Uh, he says, well, around, uh, around Imajokia, I think the general consensus would be that death is just a part of life. Well, undeath has nothing to do with the soul, so 
you know, a, at that point, a corpse is a corpse. Tess guesses she just used them as friends. Hmm. So, do I need to roll any kind of, like, athletics check to climb up a tree? Oh, yes, yes. Um, sorry, it totally slipped my mind. I meant to do that uh, earlier. You're good. So I actually do, I would like a, um, so give me a, an athletics check to climb the tree. And if you're successful there, then give me a perception check with advantage. If you're not successful, then just give me a regular perception check. You are absolutely successful at just kind of bounding up this tree. Pretty natural to you at this point. Thick. And then perception was the second one? Perception's the second one. You can go ahead and roll it with advantage because you have the high ground. You have a good vantage point. How, Don't how do I roll it again? <laughs> uh, so if you um, just roll twice in D&D Beyond. Okay. Roll twice. Keep the higher roll. So a 15 and an 18. So 18. All right. So Miss Goo is going to pull herself up on top of the highest tree she can find. Uh, with her club up there with her, and she's going to just sit there and pull real long and lazily off her pipe as she surveys the area. Uh, as you survey, uh, and from your vantage point, you can see the tops of trees for what seems like miles. Um, and you can actually see kind of toward the north, off in the, uh, off in the far distance, where the, uh, where the forest kind of breaks uh, and the, the ocean uh, kind of spreads over the horizon. Um, you can almost hear it from here, but it's still very, very distant to you. Um, you notice that uh, in the immediate vicinity of where you are, there seems to be no activity from avian wildlife. Um, while uh, often the um, kind of off a bit further, there's uh, there's quite a bit of activity. Just strikes you as being odd. What's your end score? So there's, there's a large group of birds in the distance doing something around something. Yeah, just, you know, being okay. birds, and you just kind of notice that there isn't any kind of foul um, anywhere anywhere near where you're at. Uh, just curious. Just a curious mm. observation. Um, so let's see. Ah, oh, yes, yeah, so Antarius uh, polishing his shield. <laughs> Was I about to say foul? <laughs> And Terry is sort of polishing his shield and, and uh, Val Phelan sharpening his weapon looks up at him. Why do you do that? It's just going to get dirty again. And Terry is kind of flashes sort of a look at him and doesn't. For the same reason you wash your butt, silly. <laughs> I... <laughs> oh, never mind. <laughs> For those of you, um, those of you searching the forest, um, do you want to stay together, or do you want to split up into groups, or, or do you want to split up, uh, split the group? Uh, Rec was planning on uh, sticking with the group and trying to aid, so uh, whoever was making the roll would have advantage. Okay. Um, Yolanthi, um, let's start with you. How are you searching? Mostly checking for anything that looks vaguely cave-like. Um, she, she's a little familiar with the area, so she's trying to think about all the time she's ever passed by a cave and just didn't think anything of it. So now she's like, dang, I wish I had, had paid more attention to which ones are where. You've noticed, well, um, you've definitely noticed that caves... Um, and cave entrances and the like tend to come uh, tend to come from more rocky areas that um, that sort of give uh, you know like a rock um, like a rocky uh, cliffside or something like that um, and don't don't just tend to be sort of like holes in flat earth uh, for the most part. She assumes that it must be a really big cave. A good assumption. Um, so you're probably on the lookout for rocky terrain, things like that, or maybe the signs that the terrain starts to get rocky. Um, and there's uh, there's quite a bit of that out here. 
Um, you know, there's a lot of variance in the terrain. Do I notice that there's more bird activity near where we are than there was before? Um, actually, you definitely notice there has not been any wildlife activity anywhere near you, which is very odd. She shudders and kind of looks around uneasily. She's keeping an eye out for more brain critters. Cool. Uh, let's go to Rep next. How are you searching? Uh, mainly looking for uh, the tracks from uh, the direction that uh, the Dwergar and uh, whatever that kind of creature came from, looking at like the type of like it was moving around on like stock legs tentacles what uh it had a it had little almost uh almost um almost kind of bestial looking feet um and on legs um but okay. it was very it was very small so this would be probably around the size of uh, uh of maybe a house cat or or perhaps a dog green okay. corgi uh, yeah, I'd, I'd be. Uh, Rec would be trying to uh, follow the tracks or anything that would show where they would come from. Backtrack it in that way. Okay, I think I I think I was just missed something from uh, from Miscu. Were you gonna say something? Oh, I was gonna say, are they are they still in the immediate area, or they, have they already left the camp? They've left the camp. Okay, never mind. Um. Ahara, how are you searching? Um, was was I there when you guys bought the intellect devourer, or or the uh, sorry, the, the brain creature? Uh, yes, you were there. Uh, you were in the wagon. Um, you were probably witness um, to. Well, you've definitely seen the uh, the little brain creature. Um, may, you might not have seen exactly everything go down, but you've definitely heard about it at this point because you were right there in the vicinity. Okay, so I have a good idea of its of its like you know shape legs and such inside oh yes absolutely yeah you saw a dead one gotcha um in, in, is this a forest this is a forest yes yeah. um that is my my favorite terrain excellent uh, so i'm gonna be i'm gonna be on lookout for a cave um whether that means like rocky ridge lines or, or vegetation or, or, or what have you and i'm gonna be watching for any kind of um foot tracks excellent um so I would like all three of you to go ahead and roll an investigation check, please. Um, if th so, this is I don't know if I can link this. this. Jesus. Basically, it doubles my proficiency bonus for the check. Excellent. Uh, if you need to, you can do so with your. Oh yeah, it, it linked. Uh, you're particularly familiar with one type of environment. Difficult terrain does not slow your group's travel. Your group cannot become lost except by magical means. Even when you are engaged in another activity while traveling, such as foraging, navigating, tracking, you remain alert to danger. If you are traveling alone, you can move stealthily at a normal pace. That's nice. Uh, when you forage, you can find twice as much food as you normally would, and while tracking other creatures, you will also learn their exact number, their sizes, and how long ago they passed through the area. Excellent. Uh, go ahead and roll it, and um, let me see, and this effectively doubles it, uh, right? The bonus, oh, the proficiency oh, bonus. For yeah, so it just adds three. Okay. How do I add? I can't see the roll from D&D &D Beyond. Uh, uh, you haven't rolled yet. Uh, I think you just the skill oh i can do it from i was gonna uh, say i i wanted to use the aid other action to give him advantage on that so yeah absolutely okay uh, make it so <laughs> nice dice all right we have an 18 Excellent. Um, actually, that would be uh, it. Would be plus six. You said instead of plus three. E Wait, I'm not proficient in it, right? That doesn't it doesn't double a proficiency bonus. Um, in investigation, you're not proficient in it. Right. So that plus three shouldn't be there. So it's actually a fifteen. It's actually a fifteen. 
Okay. Um, you know what? Um, don't we use survival as... for tracking or? Um, yeah, you can use survival as well. Oh, hell yeah. Can I roll that? I have a plus six to that. Yeah, please do. Sorry about that. I totally forgot about that. Thanks for pointing that out. All right, we have a 19 from Yolanti. That is an eight from Rec. Wow, with the advantage. Oh, no, that was an advantage. Yeah, we have a 28 from Ahara. All right. Uh, or actually, I think that would be a 25. Right? Oh, no, this is sort of survival. That's why it's double. Oh, right, right, right. You're proficient in survival, which would be actually a 20, uh, 31. 30. Right? Because the double proficiency from uh, uh, Natural Explorer. Okay. Uh, cool. So. So, Rek, you, um, you, you kind of start to, um, you kind of start to search around, um, with everyone and, uh, you know, kind of, kind of making that big 30 foot, um, sort of perimeter around, uh, around, um, uh, Mr. O'Hara here. Uh, so you're kind of maintaining this perimeter and sort of checking the outskirts of it. Um, but it's, it's been really slow going and about all that you've found is, uh, um, lots of forageable food and, and leave in some, uh, some various herbs, uh, that could be used maybe for medicine. Uh. Um, Yolanthi, uh, you start to notice at some point, um, while you guys are traveling that the terrain starts to, uh, sort of get more rocky and, and what you would assume to, uh, maybe give us a cliffside or something like that. Um, Ahara, you've kind of been fixated on these tracks, um, sort of moving back and forth and, um, and sort of tracking your way uh, in the correct direction. There are points in the tracks that, that it seemed like there, there may have been a, a, a bit of a scuffle. Um, so, and, and you've kind of led them back from the, from the spot that that, um, that strange creature died on the road uh, and back. You can tell that um, pretty um, pretty far along, there are only two sets of tracks. Um, there is the, uh, obviously the larger footprint, uh, it's kind of wide of the uh, Duragar, um, and a very small set of um, what, what appear to be like claw um, prints with uh, little paw marks. Um, probably from the, the tiny brain creature. I'm obviously going to share this with the others. And I guess I'll just follow the tracks. They can, uh, they're... Craig takes a finger, touches the ground, tastes it, like, yep, that's, that's, tastes right. Does it taste like dirt? <laughs> Yolanthe's been kind of picking up little bits of berries and stuff here and there, and she watches him taste the dirt and makes a face and is like, would you uh, like a snack? And offers him some berries. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he scoops up the berries from you and munches them down. Quite distracted, it seems, but um, but still trying his best. <laughs> you guys continue to um, to search until you do eventually find um, sort of the rock gives way into a, a large uh, cliff. And as you trace alongside it, and as the, the footprints as well sort of trace along it, um, you do um, find the entrance to a cave. But moments, um, moments before it's in, um, it's, it, it's within visual, uh, well, with, uh, before it's within sight, um, Ahari, you get that, that sensation that just kind of washes over you, um, that something just is not right or natural. 
sort of a dangerous sense, if you will. It's a trick. Get an axe. <laughs> Precisely. Do I, do I see any cause for the danger, or is it just a, uh, a feeling? Just sort of a feeling. I we can see the cave now, right? Yes, yes, you you can definitely see the cave. Can I cast Find Traps? Absolutely. Can you link it in the chat, please? The entrance um, to the cave itself... Not. Oh, um... Might have to do that in Foundry if it doesn't work. If you don't have like a cast yeah. for it or anything. Uh, so it's probably easiest for Foundry because it doesn't do an action in D&D &D Beyond. And in Foundry, you just click the dice next to the spell. Yeah, and it'll put it right in chat for us. Why do I not see it on your list here? Find traps. Find traps. Oh, there it is. Ah, okay. Yeah, I just saw it in chat. Uh, see, since the presence of any trap within range that is within line of sight, a trap for the purpose of this spell includes anything that would inflict sudden or unexpected effect, consider harmful or undesirable, which has the, which was specifically intended as such by its creator. Thus, the spell would sense an area. The alarm spell, glyph of warding, or a mechanical pit trap. It would not reveal a natural weakness in the floor, an unstable ceiling, or an un uh, or a hidden sinkhole. Okay. Um, Yulanti, uh, you, uh, so you cast fine traps, you start to carefully survey the, um, the entrance to this cave. Um, you don't see anything noteworthy that, that sticks out to you as being a trap. Um, although it is, uh, it's sort of a very daunting entrance. Um, you notice that, uh, along the... Uh, along the sides of this cave entrance, um, probably about 10 feet or so in, you start to notice very, um, sort of the walls kind of have a very flat, um, an unnaturally flat um, start to them. So it's almost like the, the cave as you get deeper um, sort of has a more man-made or kind of man, uh, yeah, man-made kind of look to it. Uh, so it looks like somebody at some point had dug this cave, had intentionally dug this cave out. She kind of surveys this, and she's looking at it like, what could have possibly dug such a big cave? So you guys probably overhear that. Uh, can looking at it from here, can does it look like it's tooled? Like, like is it cut blocks? Is it just solid stone? Uh, like I've seen see. enough dwarven uh, architecture in my lifetime, but. Uh, go ahead and roll. Actually, let's see. Uh, you know what? Yes, you have proficiency in nature. Um, absolutely, this looks like it's been tooled. Um, you can tell like there's the sort of the the entrance to the cave itself. Um looks to be natural uh but a few just a few feet beyond the entrance um it definitely look like there are definitely signs that of you know uh sort of like a scraping um kind of unnatural flattening of the sides of this cave like it was intentionally dug out beyond that it gets way too dark okay Any other actions here? What would you guys like to do next? How far are we from the cave? Um, 
we'll say probably around anywhere between 60 and 100 feet. I want to I want to see if we can like sneak within 30 feet of the cave and try and detect magic near it. Okay. Um so let me see. You guys already had the uh, stealth going, uh, which would still be under effect, I believe. Yes. Okay. Oh yeah, absolutely. You're able to um, you're able to close in on the cave, and you see that um, Ahara that just outside the cave, uh, there are signs of um, there are signs of a struggle. Uh, there's uh, you find blood on the ground at one. Um, it's not a whole lot of it. Um, but it looks like somebody was injured right here. And it looks like, judging by the prints around it, that it may just have been the two that you've been tracking this whole time. All right. Um, I'm going to cast Detect Magic, which will break our Pass Without a Trace. Okay. You cast Detect Magic. Um... Within 30 feet of you, um, you do not sense any magic. Oh, okay. No traps, no magic. Seems the only thing preventing anyone from going into this cave is this ugly cave itself. Indeed. It's also quite a ways off the beaten path. Well, if y'all are down for going in, I'll head in. Uh, well, they they just said they wanted us to find it. I think we should now that we now that we got a good spot on it. Make sure everyone else is cool. Well, that's fair. I'm all for finding the cave, but if there's weird things going on inside, I'd rather have the more magical ones around. I do the weird stuff. <laughs> All right, so you guys are going to head back to the camp then? Yep. Sounds yeah, like yeah. it. Okay. Uh, so for the trip back, uh, all three of you, please roll a survival check. This is for... Um, unless you want to just follow the tracks back, follow the same path, um, you can use a survival check at this point to plot a quicker route. Jeez, all right. You rolled a two and got a 13. <laughs> I'll say survival and we're in a forest. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, <laughs> um, easily uh, between yourself and Yolanthe, you're able to plot a uh, plot a route back to the uh, easily back to the camp. We put uh, little stones in the shape of arrows leading back towards the cave. You probably, yeah, leave yourself a, a nice little um uh breadcrumb breadcrumb trail all right um it's not long before you guys um well before you miss you uh see the rest of the um i guess the away team let's call them <laughs> uh returning back to the camp or back to the uh back to the wagons And Misku will uh, spot them and shout down to everyone. Looks like they're coming back in one piece. Oh, that means they didn't go in the cave. They listened so well. <laughs> Balfalin stands up. He hoists his shield over his shoulder and he sheathes his weapon. Um, and Terry is not quite satisfied with uh, with the, the polish on his armor. Uh, continues to kind of buff the front of his armor that he's wearing. This is gonna go outside and wait for the away team to show up. Um, just as you stand up, you actually see them approaching the, um, well, the, the uh, wagons. Welcome back. What did you find? 
I found these roots. We found a cave. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, that too. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. The, tr the tracks lead straight to it. Then we can confirm it is the it is the same cave. Good At work. At least came from it. Indeed. Well, I guess there's nothing left to do than to head in. Uh, let me see. Mm -hmm. So as uh, as everybody begins to collect their uh, their gear and get ready for the uh, for the venture into the cave, um, Jovan approaches you. As always, we'll stay with the carts, the wagons. Uh, how long? Uh, how long you think we should stick around? You know, in case he kind of trails off. Uh, that depends. Tess is gonna need a little bit of time, real quick, though. Kimrim kind of steps up behind him and places her hand on his shoulder. Oh, they'll come back. They always do. Kind of gives you all an affirmative nod, and Govin kind of looks at her, raises an eyebrow. There well. Tess, um, before you even start, or before the group even starts out, um, you're, you're sort of, you, you momentarily fix on the nightmare from the previous night uh, that warned of a cave. Yeah, um, I was going to cast something, actually. Oh, go on. Um, Tess is going to take a little bit of time to sit down and using her... Uh, her especially marked uh, divination bones that she's been basically collecting this entire time. We're going to cast um, Augury. Augury? Okay. Yeah. I don't know how to make it show up in the chat. Hold on. Let's see. I believe you just click on the dice next to it. <clears throat> there's... You got plenty of time. There's no Rex dice. Rex trying to put his armor back on. Clank, clank. There we go. Um... Oh, you have to you have to cast it. I did. I clicked on cast, but it didn't show up anywhere. Augury. Uh, by casting gem by casting gem inlaid sticks, rolling dragon bones, laying out ornate cards, or employing some other divination uh, divining tool, you receive an omen from an otherworldly entity about the results of a specific course of action that you plan to take within the next thirty minutes. Ooh. You already know what the action is. You receive <clears throat> from this otherworldly entity the notion of both weal and woe. Hmm. Oh, Tess doesn't even know why she asks anymore, she says in frustration as she starts packing <laughs> all of her stuff back up. If okay. Tess already knew it could be a 50-50 chance, but this is ridiculous. <laughs> um, but she is going to take the, uh, the Dorgar staff with her that she picked up. <clears throat> all right. Ah, yes, the Duragar staff. Let's see. Give me just a moment here. Oh, why is that?
There it is. Okay. Perfect. A moment, please. Nope. Need it. Uh, okay. Get anything in? At the end of the last session, you were uh, using a ritual to determine the nature of this, um, of this staff. Uh, it is a staff of the war mage. <clears throat> staff of the war mage. Oh wait, is that not a staff? Ah, crap! Hold on, that's not a staff. Give me a second. <laughs> Go ahead and in um, in either one. Can you just roll me a d twenty? Four. Okay. Hmm. See? You know, I don't know why, but heck it. I'm going to use my advantage to let her re or my uh, inspiration to let her re-roll that. I'll allow it. Go ahead. <laughs> wow. Thank you, Infier. Wow. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Holy crap. Okay. Give me. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> that so that happened. Um that that makes things really interesting. Um, well, I gotta go feed the dog real quick, so BRB. Okay, I just need one more moment here. Anything else anybody wants to grab from the wagons in preparation uh, for this venture into this cave? You have some various supplies available. Um, she has got her pipe and her club. She's ready to go. All right. Anybody else? Any other kind of preparations? Rex, Rex geared up. So. Okay. Any other equipment you want to dig through the wagons for? See if you have anything might help out in all of this. I don't know what I might look for. What would you what would you look for? Literally what I just said. Wait, what was it? I think I missed it. <laughs> no, I'm saying I don't know what to look for. Oh, you I, don't know what you'd look for. Oh, okay. Yeah, I could rummage through stuff I, and hopefully get lucky, but I don't know that I'd look for anything specific. On uh, the wagon, there are a few barrels of uh, water that are in there. There are some uh, there are some rations and things like that. There are also a few hunting traps. Um, uh, you have probably a small supply of um, of 
um, very limited explosives. Um, um, you know, like TNT, that kind of thing. I'm a huge fan of explosives. Um, I have a hunting trap. I could probably grab another or two. Sure. Okay. So you grab a couple of other hunting traps. Uh, trying to figure out what this one does here. Um, but I think I know exactly what I'm going to do with this. Uh, Tess, the staff that you have, uh, you have picked up is called a Staff of Charming. You can go ahead and add that to your inventory. I'm assuming you know how. Is this a full size staff or what? This is a full size staff. Oh. Uh, I'll go ahead and add that to your inventory right now. Yep. Bam, Staff of Charming. You can go ahead and open that up and read the uh, description. I'm going to go ahead and import your character sheet. Doing that now. All right, that should now reflect the Staff of Charming in here, making sure it does. Sorry, one moment. Yes, you have it. All right. Um, so with all of the equipment uh, out of the way, you guys make your way following the path back to the entrance of the cave, which is large enough at first for all of you to fit into, but the cave, um, uh, like I said, uh, just a ways in starts to um, sort of come to um, uh, th those like very smoothed out walls, uh, unnaturally so. Uh, and um, before long, the ceiling starts to um, sort of come down and uh, the hall uh, or the, uh, the walkway itself starts to narrow. Um, and before long... Um, you guys are enshrouded by darkness. Uh, continuing, where, uh, continuing your way in, uh, you come upon the staircase um, that you make your way down. Uh, can I have a marching order, please? Probably someone who has who needs light should probably go first. Who needs light? Or or someone who needs to carry a light, in other words. Uh well. Hmm. I would think they would be behind the people who can see in the dark. Or, you know, I mean, you you could have a, you, you could, you know, go in with your, your torchbearer leading the way. I mean, if anybody wants to light a torch. <laughs> Maybe our stealthiest can go in first to, uh, to scope out any potential dangers. Talos and I can sneak down. All right. That's You're going to have Talos leading? That makes sense to me. <laughs> Misku will, will follow behind Ahara. Okay. I can, uh, Yolanthi can go behind Misku. All right, one moment. Uh, then Serene. Tess will be behind Serene. I guess I'll stay behind Tess. Rec will follow up and protect the rear. Who's behind Tess? Sorry. <laughs> Ian Fear, are you behind? I think you're behind. Yeah, Tess. I'm behind Tess. Wow. This actually goes pretty far down. Should have planned this a little bit. That's okay. You guys kind of single file into this hallway. Um, 
And this hallway kind of cuts off in two directions. Uh, you kind of peer around the corner as you go. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to start you guys kind of stacked up. So you're kind of standing shoulder to shoulder in this hallway. Kind of makes a little bit more sense to me to do it that way. All right, and here we go. Is it dark? Yes, it's fucking dark. <laughs> right, waiting for that to load. Antarius and Valphalen take up the rear. Um, one of the two lights a torch in order to better see, but there's still a little bit up the uh, stairs, so you can't really see the light down here yet. Um, also, I should mention that this does account for dark vision, so if there is not a source of light, then you cannot see. Um, At least not that well. To those... Well, I mean, so I think I have dark vision. Does there anything that sort of looks like a place yeah, I, where I have dark a, vision as well, so... I was going to say, is there anything that sort of looks like, you know, where there would be a torch holder or candle holder or anything like that that's along these walls? Or anything uh, that looks like, you know, a where you could light it up if there was a, a source of fire on it? Uh, no, there. you do not see any such thing. Okay. Are we missing Ian Fear in the rankings? Uh, Ian Fear is actually shoulder to shoulder with you at the moment. It was kind of hard for me to squeeze everybody in on this. So okay. it's a little bit on my, of my bad. Um, there is free movement at the moment. Um, but, you know, you guys should, as always, be cautious of where you move. I see a light up ahead. Again. Perhaps a candle. Uh, Ian Fear, for this purpose, uh, when I mentioned the uh, when I mentioned the staff, it is a quarter staff. That's what I consider to be a full set. Yeah. Do we go towards the candle or keep going forward? Now there is a uh, just to your yeah you are at a you are at a um, right where Ahara is standing. There is a hallway that breaks off to the to the west. Uh, just beyond Ahari, you can start to make out a, uh, a sort of hallway off to the, um, the east. Yes, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll sneak off in that direction towards the light that I see. We'll be right behind you. Okay. Uh, are you planning on sneaking? Oh, yeah, I can sneak. Go ahead and roll that sneaky sneaky. You want to roll for both of us? Um, yes, please. You got a 16 from a heart and a 7 from Talos. Go ahead. I've lost Talos. I can't actually control Talos. Oh, uh, that's that's kind of a problem. Give me a second here. Fix that. Oh, weird. Uh, it says you have ownership of the, of him. If you have yourself selected, try pressing escape and then clicking on him. Like escape and deselect yourself, and then okay. I'm not sure if that's gonna work. See, so I I don't think his vision is on my screen. Weird. So it was in the black. I couldn't select him. Yeah, that's weird. I have you set to owner on him. It should give you vision. No, no, no. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna come around kind of the corner there, and I do see something, and so I'm gonna try and whisper behind me that there's something up ahead. So, as you kind of make your way into this room, um. There indeed is a humanoid figure, um, but he appears to be laying out on the floor. Maybe asleep, but from this distance, you can't really tell. 
Is he um like like a big or a, or a little humanoid or? It's a small humanoid, yeah. Smallish. Uh, okay. He's, he's a medium size, but he's short um, and squat. And um, you definitely notice sort of a uh, in the dim light a um, a white beard uh, kind of flowing down his um, uh, uh, down his chest. Sort of like a dwarven like appearance. Yeah, definitely dwarven like appearance. Okay. That's about all you oh. can tell from here. It's pretty dark. I will just, yeah, I will just move in because that's what I do. There's a little bit of light emanating from the from the bottom, but as you close in, this figure doesn't seem to move. But as you proceed down the stairs, um, this is a corpse of uh, Duragar. Um. Strangely enough, his head split open um, like there's been a, um, li like sort of the top of his head has just been chopped directly off. Um, you uh, kind of peering um, and investigating a little bit further. That's very gruesome. Uh, he doesn't appear to have his brain. Gross. Empty skull. I don't, it doesn't look like I can see any, anything else around this room. I'm just going to take like a, a cursory search, I guess. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll an investigation check. And what are you, what are you searching exactly? Um, I guess I'm, I'm looking at, you know, like what's on the table, if there's any other items in the room, if there's any doorways or anything like that, it looks like any, okay. it's other than what I came in. Is anybody else moving into the room? So Misku is going to post up at the end of the hall and kind of let everyone filter into the room and she's going to stand outside and watch the hallway each way. Okay. Um, it is quite quiet in here. Actually. Ah, here we go. It's actually pretty quiet in here. Except for the, uh, save for the, you know, the typical amount of ambient noise. Uh, you know, you can definitely hear the wind blowing from outside. Kind of, you know, blowing through the tunnels here. Um, again, there's a, uh, there's a hallway that also breaks off to the left. And uh, just down the, uh, just down the hall, you know, stairs uh, leading down further into the tunnel. It looks like you can see pretty far down, actually. Uh, Serene Wreck, are you guys moving around? Ahara. Uh, so, did you roll that? Ah, yes, your investigation skill check. And uh, I'm sorry, one more time, what all are you investigating? Is it just uh, kind of around the room or? Yeah, nothing specific. I'm just looking looking around the room if there's anything to, to look at. Um, I'm, I'm looking at the walls for any sort of other exits. Um, Looking at kind of what's on the table. I guess I didn't mention I'm specifically looking at, at the corpse. So let's say I didn't do that. Okay. Um, so uh, you start to kind of sift through the um, through the pockets of this corpse, and you actually find a key in his pocket. Seems to just be a pretty standard looking brass key. I got the brass. Otherwise, around the room on the table there is a chess set. Uh, it's a dragon chess set. Um, there are um, there are some stools gathered around the table and a lit candle. All it's right. kind of burning oh. away. I'm going to proudly show the key around. Say again? Proudly showing the key to everyone. Look what I have. Are you going to say something, Serene? Yeah, Serene. Um, so are these stairs? Yes. yes, they are stairs. So Serene wants to investigate the stairs if no one's done that. I don't think anyone has investigated the stairs. Uh, like anything laying on the ground or anything? Cotton cobwebs? Uh, nope, they don't seem to uh, don't seem to be anything particularly special about these stairs. Okay. Let me go ahead and drag in the other two. So I haven't done that yet. Uh, let's see. 
Where did I put him? Ah, here we go. All right, I'm going to give Antarius a bit of... Let me see, so it would be a... Yolanthe is looking at the brainless body here and kind of says, <clears throat> I think this might be the one we met outside. Tess agrees. And she's kind of poking around at the body and taking a look at the skull and everything. And Terrius lights a, having lit up a torch, um, comes down the hall. Um, and everything sort of lights up for you guys uh, within radius. Yolanthe looks at the candle that's lit on the table next to the chess set and says, so is somebody coming back? It's kind of noticing that corpse on the ground um, has the top of his head completely cut off. Pretty gruesome. There's blood um, all over that area where he's at. Did it look like it was, does it look like it was like manually cut off with a weapon or does it look like, like a, a chicken hatched from an egg? Uh, this looks like a <clears throat> precision job. Um, From the looks of it, Tess doesn't think that they're going to be continuing this game. Of chess, that is. Are you, uh... In fear, up at the top of the stairs, he's going to say, it looked like there was going to be mate and Nate anyway. <laughs> Are you investigating the corpse to kind of find out the way he died? Is that what's going on? Yeah, I mean, she also. I also um, have religion, so I can see if it's like a like a cult, like someone cut into the brain to use it for other means. I'll let you also roll in a, a uh, if you'd like a, a medicine to to try to determine the way he died, or an investigation if you prefer. Okay, I'll do medicine. Four is my lucky number today. Uh, I am going to go ahead. Uh, well, let me see. Yeah, I should be able to see her from there. Uh, no. Sure. No, you mm. can see her. Yeah, no, the problem is is I can only add up to four to that. Uh, that would make a difference. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, spend two sorcery points to do bend luck. And uh, okay. Going... Are you... Uh, so that's a... What level spell is that? It's not a spell. It's a it's an ability. So uh, as a reaction, uh, I can uh, when another it says when another I, creature you see makes an attack or an ability check or saving throw, I yeah, use my I, reaction. I remember what it did. I just didn't remember if it was a spell or not. No, it, go ahead it's and roll just your a d four, yeah. I believe. And then roll, and I'm gonna add a three to that. All right, so uh, nine, uh, 12. Uh, so with the 12 um, medicine check, uh, Tess, you are able to, uh, you're, not, you're not only able to discern that the, uh, that the cut on his head looks almost surgical in nature. Like it's, it's very clean. Um, it doesn't look like it was struggled against or anything, but the bruises uh, that line this thing's arms uh, sort of betray that there was a struggle before, uh, possibly before this this incision occurred. Okay. Um, standing up from the body, Tess is going to kind of come back to everyone and say, uh, it looks like that man was killed on purpose. There was a struggle beforehand, and after he died, well, they took his brain and did something with it. I want to... Yolanthe wants to see if there's anything tasty in this barrel. In the barrel? Oops. Ah, go ahead and roll, and... Uh, actually, let me see. Do you have any tools with which to open said barrel? Anything you can kind of wedge in there and, and get the top off of it? Just my spear. Spear would work. Yeah, you could use the uh, tip of your spear and try to kind of wedge wedge it into the 
the top. Uh, let's go ahead and make that a... Or actually, you know what? That's easy enough. Uh, it's a tool, so uh, you're able to get the, uh, the top off, and um, you... Uh, let, let's actually go ahead and roll... We need to roll anything for that? No, we don't need to roll anything for that. So you pull the top off of the barrel. Um, there are some meats that uh, you, you know, can't at first identify. They seem to be some kind of salted, preserved meats uh, that are inside this barrel. So yeah, I'd say they're uh, they look pretty tasty. They don't she look, licks uh... her lips and takes one out and starts gnawing on it. All right. Um, tastes like. Beef, red meat, um, and there's plenty of it here. Is it like dried meat or? It's preserved meat. It's okay. like sort of like um, yeah. You know, it's it, they're they're using like salt and other compounds to preserve it. Is that is it tasty? Tess says as she looks at Yolanthe chowing down. With her cheeks absolutely stuffed full of it, she just nods her head like, mm-hmm, and just offers up some to Tess. Tess takes a little nibble. It's raw. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely raw. Tess has had raw meat before. It's, it's, it's okay. Not terrible. <laughs> All right. Any other actions here? Could pocket some of the meat to take back to the wagon. <laughs> yeah, I'm stuffing some in my pockets. But other than that, I think we're done here. Tess. A voice in your head. You were told not to enter the cave. She shudders a little bit and kind of closes her eyes says, uh, Tess still doesn't feel good about being in here. Perhaps we should press on. Well, this room is a dead end. <laughs> Seeing you come back, uh, Valphalen and Antarius take a step back to give you guys room. All right. Uh, where are you guys going from here? Shall we move further in? Misku is going to signal back to our left that there's uh, another room down here. So you move just past the hallway. It's eerily very quiet. Anyone brave enough to have a peek? Does anybody want to round this corner? As you come around the corner, Rack, it's dead quiet. You can hear just your footsteps echoing through the hallway. Finally, as you round the corner again, a door. There's a very thick-looking, sturdy-looking, um, metallic door. Uh, you guys are able to uh, move past one another, by the way. Um, yeah, you can, yeah you can always cross between um, other players. Yeah, Rack will just kind of mention back, hey, there's a door down here. And then let whoever come when it wants to actually investigate it. Ahara's the one with the key if it's locked. I will try it. I'm going to try the door. So the key does fit in the lock. And as you uh, turn it, the door does open. That's what she said.
Okay, I was like, did Talos open the door? <laughs> That's a pretty smart wolf. As you enter here, um, there is yet another... Um, there's yet another... Um, uh, you're, you're sort of on this ledge above um, a greater room at the bottom. Uh, this one a lot better lit. Uh, you notice a couple of corpses... Um, laid about the floor in the same fashion as before. Their heads split open, their brains missing, blood everywhere. Several cages also hang from the ceiling. Um, two of them uh, with skeletons inside that seem very old. Uh, one uh, with yet another of the corpses missing its, uh, the top of its head. It's a very gruesome scene. Uh, on the south wall, yet another door. Well, this is becoming ominous. Shall we continue? Mm, Tess still has a very bad feeling about this. She says as she kneels down to investigate this guy that she's next to. Yolanthic kind of shrinks down a little bit and kind of gets real close to Tess, like I'm barely starting to agree with you. It's just dead things, Tess. Oh, Tess is very comfortable with dead things, but the brains, the uh, the the thing that came out of the cave, we don't know who's doing this. This is true. Tess, you, uh, without even needing to investigate the body further, you see the same markings on each of these corpses uh, that you did before, save for the save for the one in the cage. Um, there definitely seems to be, uh, be signs of struggle, um, bruises on the arms of both of these creatures. Um, one of them, obviously Duragar, the other one human. Do they have anything on their person? Go ahead and roll an investigation check. Um, immediately you turn to the pockets, uh, of which the, um, the Duragar once again has a small, um, brass key. Oh, another key on this one, she says as she holds the key up. Can I do a check on this other body that's on the floor? Absolutely. Go ahead and roll investigation. Rifling through his pockets and, uh, you know, in the, checking things a little bit more thoroughly. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, searching the body, we'll say find around 15 gold. It's, uh, definitely hasn't been robbed or anything like that. Um, they only that you loved also, him for his mind. You also notice that this is a fresh kill. Like, this body still feels a bit warm. Uh, this one definitely shows signs of struggle. Um, his armor and stuff is torn in places. This one is not a Duragar, is it? Not a Duragar, it's a human. At least, what's left of one? She stands up kind of slowly and looks around the room suspiciously and is like, I think uh, whatever's been doing this might be here now. Well, what makes you say that, Yolanti? She kind of looks down at the body and nudges at it a little bit with her foot, like, he's not, not cold. He's not stiff. 
Tess examines the floor to see if there's any like blood droplets or anything leading anywhere. There don't seem to be, no. Um, all the blood in each of these cases seems to be self-contained. Hmm. Um, meaning that it's next to the corpse um, to which it belongs, clearly. In fact, um, strangely enough, the bodies don't seem like they were moved. Does it look like they were, like, like they fell or that they were already there when they started bleeding? Like they were already there when they started bleeding. Interesting. If there was any motion thereafter, it was too slight to notice. Antarius and uh, Val Phelan make their way in. Val Phelan kind of looking over the, the side of um, of this uh, this loft area above. He grimaces. Well, what have you found? Or perhaps I don't want to know. Uh, two dead bodies. One is still warm. The one next to Yolanthi. This happened pretty recently, it seems. Tess is very concerned about how easily the brains were... Uh, Taken. These slices are very clean, indicating it was probably a lot of force or something magical used. Hmm. Gruesome. Who could have done this? I hear any noise coming from the other side of this door. Uh, is the listen check still a thing? <clears throat> I think it's just perception. Go ahead and roll perception. It's dead silent. House backs away from the door. This is... This is really creepy. The other side of the door is also uh, just as quiet. Misku, what are you doing during this? Uh, Misku's just making sure everything's chill in the hall. She doesn't want us to get trapped inside one of these rooms, so she's going to keep on a lookout outside. Go ahead and roll a perception check. From down the hall to the south, you hear a very, very slight, very faint um, sound of perhaps a humming or something. Something a bit more mechanical sounding. Definitely not human. All right. Uh, Mitsuki will hold position, but she'll keep her eyes fixed southward. Hmm. Any other actions here for the rest of you? Can I investigate the door again and see if it's unlocked? See, does it lock? You try the doorknob, doesn't turn. Does the brass key work? The one that you picked up? You fit the brass key into the lock, but trying to turn it, um, it doesn't budge. Uh, could I try my key? Just Absolutely. It opens. Oh, Ahara has the master key. 
Ye. All right. Well, I'm going to wander down the hallway then. All right. Once I'll again, uh, moving down the hallway, you um, kind of eerily quiet here. Uh, as you round the corner, uh, it seems that this hallway connects with another T intersection. see Ahara to your north you notice a figure at the top of some stairs um I think I'm gonna try and move toward it quietly and hold my bow ready Miscu, uh you also uh, you also hear a or you hear and see a figure coming toward you from the bottom of the stairs down the hall I miss go will tense up but um as the figure approaches it is clearly ahara <laughs> bow drawn <laughs> kind of creeping down the hallway this is apparently the self same hallway that you were just in two hallways connecting to it both locked doors on either side all right miss go will uh breathe a sigh of relief throw her club over her shoulder and just kind of scratch her head Give a sharp nod and put my bow away and kind of move back where I was. All right. Miss Google will right. advance more towards the party with that being said. Right. <clears throat> um, you can sort of make out toward the, uh, you can make out the end of a hall, the hallway finally, and over to the right, uh, you can clearly, uh, well, you can faintly make out what appears to be yet another door down the stairs before you. Right, cool. Whisper back. Hey, think I think I see another door down here. Uh, Antarius. Comes down the hall as well. Paces just before you. And as he rounds the corner, the torch illuminates the uh, the wall. So great. Cool. Shall I try this door too? Uh, at this point, um, I would like to say you all, uh, you all probably also have picked up on this faint hum. You said it. Repeat. Ian Fear, I didn't. I didn't hear you. You cut off after you said it. You lost power. Oh, well, oh, darn. No, oh, darn. If you turn off your computer for a while and turn it back on, it comes on. That's how the flashlights work. <laughs> uh anyone else any uh uh does Tess recognize this kind of sound this humming no is it like a person humming or like a machine humming this is more mechanical in nature Gotcha. It's a it's a constant. There's no room for breath. Definitely not human. I wouldn't say I wouldn't actually I wouldn't yeah. lock in that it's a mechanical thing. Um but I would I would say that this is not human in nature. Not human oh, in nature. What I was gonna say is you since this is not like a human humming, did would you say this sounds somewhat similar to the uh the humming type of sound we heard in uh the caves? Or in the uh, in the prisons in the hell. Yes. Yes. Then I'm gonna. Then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna mention and say this. This sounds somewhat like 
That sound we heard when we found the portals and help. Huh, I seem to have forgotten that when I was trying to remember what the humming noise was. Alright. Shall I try the door? Any objections? No, but Tess is going to hang back. Yeah. Well, I'll try it first to see if it is unlocked. Uh, can you click on it? No, it, it appears to... Chuck, chuck, chuck. Do you hear that when I do that? Um, when I click it, it makes a noise. Ah, okay. So yes, lock tight. Kind of sounds like a door that's locked. <laughs> All right, I'm going to try the key. The key fits into the lock, but it does not turn. This My key does not fit this lock, not as master as we thought. Do you still have your key, Tess? Yes. Let Tess give it a try. Your key does indeed fit into the lock, and it turns. The lock opens. All right, Tess opens the door. Beyond the door, a very small hall uh, hallway at the end blocked by yet another door. Ah, uh, this place has so many doors. This one's locked. Locked tight. Again, you try your key. But this time, it doesn't turn. Does my key also work? Not work? Also not working. I... They're not working, I can say, I have a skill I can use. It's just that if I do, it will alert anyone and everyone who's even remotely close by to our location. Why would it alert everyone? Let's just say it makes a giant noise when it does. Does anyone here know how to pick one of these locks? I got a lock picked right here. Wreck lifts his hammer. <laughs> mm, that one might also be just as loud as Ian fears. Misku is going to push her way to the front, cracking her knuckles and saying, sounds like y'all need the expertise of a professional criminal here. By all means. All right. All right. Misku, what are you, uh, what's your intention? Uh, I am going to break out thieves tools. Okay. And let's see if I can get us in this door. All right. Um, so let's see thieves tools, uh, by themselves, I believe, um, I think there's a I think there's a roll on them, isn't there? Are you able to roll those? Uh it, it... I'd think you do uh like either dexterity or intelligence based on whatever they're good at. Okay. Yeah, let's do uh let's you can um so we can do this a couple of different ways. Uh, you can either do a, I'll, I'll either let you do a dexterity check, a sleight of hand check, uh, or, hmm, dexterity, sleight of hand, what are those thieves tools? Let me read the, uh, 
And I would think because they're proficient with the tool they're using, they'd get the proficiency bonus on that roll. Yeah, you'd have you have the proficiency bonus if you're proficient with them. Usually, with the um, with like rolling, if if you have the proficiency in the t in the thieves tool, you roll um, a, a dexterity check, and it's like a DC fifteen to pick a lock. Yeah. Okay. Depending on the lock. <laughs> All right, so I will throw a. I'll just fix. So it's going to be sl slide of hand with every modifier I have plus three for proficiency, correct? Um. Yeah, which I mean, sleight of hand is already just a dexterity check, so it would have been yeah. a dexterity check plus your proficiency. All right, I'll go ahead and roll it. I had given him uh, guidance, so an extra d4. Okay. Ooh, thank you. So. So. So you efficiently you're able to. Um, so you see, Miss, you sort of kneel down and and uh, break out these tools. Um, there is a, uh, there's a probe and there's a tension. Um, and he starts to sort of, or uh, she starts to sort of rifle around at, with the lock. And before long, Miss Goo, there is a quiet, um, there is a quiet but very satisfying click as the door, um, as the door lock gives. Um, it sort of echoes through the hallway, and, uh, seemingly and possibly on the other side. But with your proximity to the small lock, the humming noise uh, is quite clearly, uh, is quite clearly emanating from the other side of this door. All right. <clears throat> um. Hmm. What's your plan? Uh, can I go ahead and roll for stealth? I'm going to try and, like, quietly open the door and slide in. Yes, you can. Alrighty. All right. All right. So you uh, you very quietly open this door, and the moment that you do, um, you can already see several figures, um, none of which appear to be uh, appear to be kind of uh, like turned toward the door or anything. They all appear to be kind of facing uh, inward. Uh, they don't seem to have noticed that you've opened this door. At this point, I'd like everyone to go ahead and roll an initiative check. I've got a 14 with advantage. All right. Keel. Two with. Two with. Right with 14. with 19 in fear with 13 seem uh i'm sorry you rolled with uh advantage or disadvantage advantage so uh, 14 okay. 10 hara have you rolled yet i didn't see you roll just rolled a 22 oh, okay i see it it's in sound cool Leaves Val and <laughs> well, Ant was not ready for this at all. A couple more rolls from my end. Uh, 
All right. And away we go. Okay. Um, so gonna um, we're gonna consider this the setup turn. Um, and the way this is going to go is uh, all of you guys currently have, um, well, all, um, Misku being the first one that's opened the door here, you are currently stealthed. Um, everybody else, if you'd like to uh, stealth your way into this room, uh, we can we can you know, we can discuss that as we go. Uh, but let's go ahead and open up with a full party turn. Uh, you guys have the advantage in this situation because they have not noticed you yet. So, um, what's the plan? What are you doing? All right. First thing, Miss will turn to the rest of the team. Uh, just raise up four fingers, saying, "I can see at least four right now." As that door opens, all of you can now hear the the boom, 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 boom. It's like a pulsing magic, uh, magical kind of noise. Um, this is definitely, uh, and now that you hear it uh, outright, um, uh, now that you hear it outright, Tess, yes, this does sound exactly like that noise that you heard in the cave. They must be doing some kind of ritual. How should we handle this? Every ritual I've seen so far has been bad. Well, if they're trying to summon something, we might want to uh, cause a distraction and end it early. Misku, can you see what they're doing in there? Um, what? So from the doorway, what specifically can I see? I'm looking so out there. Kind of have the door cracked at this point, and you're kind of peering through, and you can see that. So these four. These four Duragar, they're kind of standing about in, in a very strange way. They're just kind of standing there. They don't seem to be, like, conversing normally or uh, or even moving or anything like that. Um, they do kind of tend to look around. Um, uh, but they they sort the way they move strikes you as being a little bit strange. Uh, also, uh, you know, one kind of turns eh, kind of toward the door but not really like looking directly at it um you kind of notice that the the facial expression on this guy is very blank like it kind of doesn't look like he's all there yeah miss hmm. looks back and just shrugs saying they're just kind of standing there they don't look Right in the head, but they're there. This guy, your criminal background sort of gives you the sense that um, while you have the advantage for now, you should act quickly at this point because you're going to lose that advantage very quickly uh, once they notice that door's open. Misku would suggest, I guess should have said, um, if we can get some more muscle up here with me, I think we can take down most of the ones I can see from here pretty quick. So all the muscle goes in first, and then uh, we'll follow up with uh, magic and other attacks? Antarius peeks around, uh, kind of looks around back toward Valphalen and Wreck. Shall I lead the charge? Rick will do his best to move forward and get up there with them. Uh, does everybody that's a non-magic user want to kind of shift back? Or uh, not, not a magic user, I mean uh, non-fighter. Uh, let me... Sh can, Ian Fear, are you, uh, are you still up without power? 
Yeah, this is a block thing, so. Understood. I'll, I'll try to help you move around as best I can. All right. Um, so marching order at this point, then? Uh, do we want... Uh, so Misku is obviously at the door, um, kind of keeping watch at the moment. Uh, I've got Antarius, Fel, and then Wreck, unless we want to reorganize that. Like, uh, Wreck, do you want to charge in? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me swap you with, uh, with Antarius. Or can you uh, swap into that newly open space? Okay. As you pass by him, Val, um, Val gives you an affirmative nod. I'll be just behind you. All right. He looks at Misku and Val. It's like, are we are we each gonna try and go for one, or do we want to gang up on one? Hmm. Misku, what the what do the groups look like? So how are these are these Jagger that are out here also that I'm yeah, seeing? These are, these are Duragar for sure. How uh how how stout are these guys looking? Uh I, they look they look like pretty easy uh easy prey actually. You could easily take one yourself. Mesku looks Mesku will look back to the group and go, I think we can we can one on one them. Me and Rack wanna take the two on the left and looks to value and Antarius to take the two on the right. Oh wow. Groups of two, then. How spaced out are these groups? Uh, they're not. They're not standing shoulder to shoulder, but they're not too far apart. It'll really be a team fight. Okay. Yeah. So the plan is to charge in, break stealth, and meet our foe head on. If anything goes wrong, we've got um. Uh, Ian Veer can transform people into animals all of a sudden. <laughs> and uh, Tess can attempt to hold one person. All right. I'm going to go ahead and jot down the plan because we are getting, uh, we are at the end of our session here. You go ahead. Uh... Okay. Guys, that is the end of our time today. So we'll get back to this combat next time. Until then, um, I hope that you guys will tune in uh, on Saturday for Deep Space Transmissions, um, our Elite Dangerous series in which we're at the, uh, well, we are at the very edge of the, uh, <laughs> of the Milky Way galaxy, aren't we? Um, so please join us for our trip home from Beagle Point. Um, that happens Saturday from 6 to 9 p.m. Central Time. Uh, otherwise, um, be sure to join us next week for the conclusion of this strange old cave. Um, and until then, uh, this is VG Punks and friends, and we are signing off. Keep a song in your heart.